Okay. Um, I just want to read out a couple of verses um, before we pray. And this is from Proverbs chapter 3. Um, Proverbs chapter 3, verse, verses 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So, um, three things that we are you know, called to do trust and uh, lean on him, not in our own understanding, and also to acknowledge him, acknowledge the Lord in all our ways. Right? Three things. And, uh, and in verse six, that he shall shall direct your paths. So um, if we are in a place where we need direction, if we are in a place where we um, need his um, guidance, his counsel, his direction, his leading, um, you know, so these are some things that we can do. Uh, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart, meaning that it's possible to trust in the Lord selectively right? um, and not wholeheartedly. It's possible to select, I mean, it's possible to trust in him selectively. Um, but we are asked to trust in him wholeheartedly. Um, then, and lean not in our own understanding, you know, our own experience, our own learnings, uh, uh, and our own understanding of things. Sometimes they they come in the way of trusting in the Lord. You know, all this, this is good. You know, experience is good. Learning is good. Sometimes when it comes to take that step of faith, um, it comes in the way of fully trusting him. So, and in all our ways to acknowledge him, in all our ways, everything that we do, everything that we choose to do, in all our decisions, to acknowledge the Lord, to include the Lord, to acknowledge him. And the promise is that he shall direct our paths, right? So let's, uh, let's pray and uh, let's make a choice uh, to trust in him. Let's make a decision to to lean on him and not in our own understanding. Let's make a you know decision to acknowledge him in everything that we do and uh, not really compartmentalize and uh, leave him out, but to acknowledge him in in all things, in all our ways. Right. Okay, Father, we thank you, thank you for this day. We thank you for your word, Lord. We um, we pray that um, that we be we we do stand in that place of Lord. Um, depending on your leading, um, needing your guidance, Lord. And so we thank you for this um, exhortation and instruction in your word to trust in you wholeheartedly, Lord, and uh, not lean on our own understanding and to acknowledge you in all our ways, God. Um, Lord, I pray that you'll enable us to do that, enable us to remember this. And um, even as we go through this day, God, that I pray that your word will just keep ringing in our hearts, ringing in our spirit. And uh, I pray that we will experience um, your guiding, your directing, Father God. And uh, yes, Lord, your word says that uh, as the river flows, God, and as the river just flows, and but God, so also the heart of the kings, God, in your hands, Master. And I just pray those who um, need um, that kind of uh, assistance and help, Lord, maybe from higher authorities or something that needs uh, uh, a clearance with, uh, with some, maybe some governmental um, department. Um, Lord, we, we pray that you will direct. We pray that, uh, Lord, all those decision makers, God, that you will direct their paths as well. Uh, we pray for speedy decisions, conclusions of certain things that are pending, that are certain things that are held up, uh, delays. Father God, we pray for speedy conclusions, speedy decisions. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes, Lord, we, we thank you. We come at this day into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, hey, welcome those who joined in um, just now. Okay, so uh, I was saying that um, um, 
you know, Alice and uh, Salome are unable to present today. So um, if there's anyone else who wants to present, who have not presented, you're welcome to do that today. Um, but I see from the screen that uh, most of you have presented. So Abhishek, if you're, if you're okay to present, if you're ready to present, you can do that today. Or even Avni, if you're ready to present, if you're okay, you can present today after Prabhaka shares, right? Okay, so um, right now, over to Prabhaka. Uh, go ahead, Prabhaka, you can share. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, I don't have a presentation, but I would like to speak. This way. I, I thank God for this platform, like where I can be vulnerable to mistakes and be corrected. So uh, my topic is the God who remembers. I've given a title like, but God will not forget you. We are not forgotten by God or our, our prayers are not been forgotten by our God. When we say God remembers, it doesn't mean you know, he has forgotten and suddenly he remembers something. To us, uh, to remember something, it means you must have forgotten and then suddenly it came to your memory. That, but God doesn't suffer from uh, amnesia or he doesn't have any forgetfulness. Uh, so when God remembers his people or when God remembers something, it means that he is announcing uh, of, his, of him doing something new or he is announcing the fulfillment of his promise or he is announcing his intervention in his, in his people. I could say it is it is uh, the time of fulfillment. So when God remembers, it is like He's doing something. Uh, God will not forget. You know, you know uh, we forget what we spoke, but God doesn't forget what we what He spoke. Uh, we we could see uh, in Bible like many incidents that God remembers. In Genesis eight verse one, He says, like "God remembered Noah, and He sent a wind." And he saved his people. In Genesis 19, verse 29, God remembered Abraham and saved Lot. In Genesis 30, verse 22, God remembered Rachel and he opened the womb. I would like to uh, present the story of uh, Uriah. We all know that his life is very dear to me. Uh, we know. Uh, Uriah was a faithful servant. Uh, we, we can read that in Second Samuel chapter eleven and twelve, life of Uriah. Here uh, yeah, we see David uh, was a king, and Uriah was working under David's army. Uriah was sent to war. In his absence, uh, David David uh, falls for. Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, as a result, she was found with a child. And David plans uh, to cover up his mess. So he does lots of things. We, we can read that. It is so heartbreaking. Um, but Uriah was a faithful person. You know, uh, uh, David wanted to bring back Uriah from a war. And he does a lot of things and he says uh, to Uriah, uh, go to your house and be with your wife so that he can cover up the things. But these are the words Uriah, Uriah said. You know, Uriah said he did not go to his house, but he rather slept, in, uh, slept at the doors of king's house. And these are the words he said. He said, the ark and Israel and Judah are dwelling in tents and my Lord Job and the servant of the Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go to my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As you live and as your soul lives, I will not do these things. These are the words of a faithful person. But David somehow he does lots of plans and uh, puts Uriah to death. He was very successful to manipulate. Uh, and he... he he could manage the memories of people, but God's memory, he couldn't do anything. God sent uh, Nathan the prophet to remind 
David about David to present David to David. In fact, David didn't like himself. And I, it, it, it reminds me of a word. God looks, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the inner heart of a person. As a result, David has to face the consequences, all the things. But it is so unfair. Like in Uriah being faithful, it is so unfair. I even thought sometimes, Lord, I don't want to be like Uriah. <laughs> it is so unfair. But uh, a beautiful thing happened. Uh, think with me. When, the, when, when Matthew was writing the genealogy of Jesus Christ, um, we know Holy Spirit is inspiring, teaching scribes to write. When it came to genealogy, you know, Uriah's genealogy has been wiped off. Uriah's descendant is wiped off. But when Matthew was writing the genealogy of Jesus, Holy Spirit is telling uh, in chapter Matthew 1, verse 6, uh, the Je and Jesse, the father of King David, David, the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Here, can you can you imagine Holy Spirit is telling Matthew to write, write Bathsheba, who was the wife of Uriah. It's so amazing. This was written after centuries, after so many years, but yet God remembered Uriah. And he is in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, my my conclusion is like, even if we are in high places like King David, let us not forget God remembers us. Or we are in the place like like Uriah, let us not forget that the God who remembers us. Um, uh, I think God measures faithful. I, God measures success with a rod or scale called as faithfulness. So, whatever situation we are in, God is able. God is capable, and God can help us. So, this is the topic I want to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhaka. Um, that was that was nice. I've never heard anyone uh, you know, speak uh, about. I mean, for me personally, I think that was that was good. It was really really good, um, uh, especially um, you know, God never, not forgetting. And you know, stage one we see Nathan coming, and um, and that was nice. You know, um, how you put it together. Uh, saying Nathan presents David to David, it was really nice, and and the fact that David did not like David, you know, the fact that um, you know the, his his sinful acts and uh, whatever he has been, he didn't like it when Nathan presented it in the way he did, right, in the form of that story, rich man, that was wonderful. And then this second stage we see um, in, in the in the gospel, wonderful, wonderfully captured, wonderfully shared. Um, it was really nice. Thank you. That was good. Um, so you had some more time left. You know, in fact, uh, I think you had about maybe four, four, five minutes. So, um, so one of the things to do is, uh, uh, of course, this is an exhortation never to forget uh, the fact that God remembers. Um, so it can be, a, you know, the conclusion can be something uh, very, very encouraging. You could. You know, continue on, um, you know, and talk about situations. Talk about different situations, and uh, I think that would be that would have been nice. Uh, but it was very nice, wonderful, very powerful. Um, thank you, thank you for sharing that. Very thank nice. you, Mister. Thank you. Sorry. God bless. Yeah. So, um, you know, like I was saying, is there anyone else? So Avni said that she can't uh, present today. Not ready. Uh, if there's anyone else, like Abhishek, are you uh, ready to present today? I know you're scheduled. Uh, 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 yes, Pastor, I can. Uh, but can? I cannot uh, uh, present the the PPT? PowerPoint. That's, that's okay. No problem, no problem. 
Uh, but were you planning to uh, have a PPT? Yes, I uh, thought that I'll make a PPT. I thought it will be next next week. That's why. Oh, I see. Okay. No, okay. If you, I mean, if you feel that you want to do that and then uh, do it, that's fine. I don't want to uh, kind of force you anything. Uh, which we but, prefer. You want to take some time, prepare the PPT, and present it. Yeah. I to you. If uh, I can now uh, present the word of God, but mm -hmm. without the PPT. Yeah, I mean uh, that's fine. But if if you really like to, you know, present it with the PPT, uh, you can take your time also. But I just leave it to you. Um, but uh, okay. Faster, I will uh, do today. Okay. Okay. Great. Fine. Maybe uh, you know if if you have the PPT, you can upload it in the stream. Um, okay. I, I will Sam, later. Yeah, you can do that. Sure. No problem. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, so I think you. only Sam has so far uploaded the PPT. Uh, I haven't checked yet. Yeah. So maybe the others who had PPTs, um, you could put it on the stream, please. So the you know, everyone can just go through that. Okay, fine. Okay, go ahead, Abhishek. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I uh, pray a small prayer? Yeah, of course. Okay. Holy Father, we come before your holy presence for saying, Lord, uh, give me a boldness and encourage, uh, fill me with the Holy Spirit, speak through me, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your guidance and leading me, Lord Jesus, to the word of God, uh, that everybody heard be of uh, Fill me with the word of God. Touch everybody's life, Lord, here in the classroom, Lord. Thank you, Father, for using me for your glory. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I thank you, Pastor Jai Kumar, that you give me an opportunity to share the word of God with the classroom. And so today we see the, the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll go back to that uh, First uh, Corinthian uh, chapter one verse seventeen to eighteen says that for I uh, Paul says in the first Corinthian chapter for Christ sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel not with wisdom of word lest the cross of uh, Christ should be made of non effect for the preaching of the cross is to them the fairest foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of God so uh, today we are living in a uh, they were church is changing uh, and pastor and the whole denomination we see that the message of the cross of the of the salvation through the blood of jesus are moving toward a uh, salvation of through good works or humanism or social activity like messages today we see most of and the old message of the cross is replaced by the masses that lack power and which lack hope and and has no life instead of hearing the devastating but life-changing news that men are sinners that we are all sinners and will face the wrath of god one day people hear a message that tell them it is all well you can do anything once you are a member of the local church and pays your tithe Regularly, it's all right and you're okay. Well, uh, so I would like to uh, take the time stand that the Apostle Paul took all those his years uh, when he wrote the church in Corinth. Paul reminded that he had been called for one purpose and that purpose was to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That message was to be his focus, that message to be his ministry, that message was to be his life. To live forever. Today, uh, I would like to uh, restate the old message and remind everyone in this classroom about what happened that uh, that day when the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. It was that event which took place uh, at the Calvary two thousand years ago that altered the future of every person uh, who. who place their faith in the one who died there on the cross that day. So uh, we can uh, today revisit that old story once again, as we go back to that little hill outside the gates of the city of Jerusalem, 
where we will encounter and even that purchase uh, purchase our salvation for every person who received that even as their own and is because of that even uh, that e because of that even came to pass so uh, so we go the preaching of the clause uh, the jews are thinking that uh, looking for a messiah who throw the roman captivity the roman yoke and give them a liberty from their captivity and uh, little bit history of that that they, they totally miss the fact that their messiah would be one who would suffer for the sins of the people like in the book of uh, isaiah said in uh, verse 53 1 to 3 says that who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant as a root out of dry ground he has no form or comeliness when we see him there is no beauty that we should desire him he is despised and rejected by man a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief and we hide as it were our face from him he was despised and we did not esteem him uh, and thus message of the cross of jesus is a still a strange message to those who have never experienced his life changing power and is a foolishness to them because in the first corinthian uh, chapter 1 verse 21 to 24 says Yeah. Uh, says, uh, for since is the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, a Greek seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. but to those who are called both jews and greek christ the power of god and the wisdom of god so uh, we see that a uh, people uh, many people reject the message of the cross and the brutal experience the brutal death that experienced by the lord jesus christ on the cross the death that uh, christ died on the cross was an absolute torture we see and uh, we cannot even imagine all the pain that lord jesus was forced to endure for our sake so uh, we'll refresh our mind right now this morning that the terrible price that lord jesus uh, paid for us as he suffered for our sin or iniquities or transgression on that day so uh, he is scourged in matthew 27 26 he was beaten in luke 22 to 63 64 he was mocked and uh, his he was spit upon in matthew 27 30 and his beard was plucked in yeshaya 50 verse 6s and he was mocked uh, 27 was again and he stripped naked for us in matthew 27 and 35 and he was nailed to the cross at the end matthew 27 and 38 yes he the, the even the disciple uh uh most of the disciple in john 10 25 says that the other disciple therefore said unto we have seen the lord but he said unto them except i see his hand the print of the nail and put my finger into print of the nail trust my hand into his i will not believe the uh, the thomas also said that but uh he was dead a uh, very perivin that this truth that that his jesus suffer for us a very uh, very uh, terrible death for us in jeshia 52 14 also says that as is 14 says that as many were astonished as his image was mare mare more than any man his form more than the sons of man he was bitter cup but one that he drank willingly so that he would, might be saved 
So here the detail of Christ's death on the cross is disturbing, but it's a necessary truth that must be proclaimed, must be heard before, so there can be a salvation. Beloved, uh, dear, so there's only way for us to get to God, that is by the way of the cross. There is no salvation apart from faith in the work done and finish of Jesus on the Calvary cross. The purpose of the cross is, the Bible tells us that there is no other way to receive forgiveness or to cleanse from our sin, but through the sacrifice of an innocent one of the guilty one, for the guilty one. In Hebrew 9.22 says that almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. So this is this we see in, in Genesis 3.21 says that this same line of uh, thought that continued all the way through the days of tabernacle and the temple. Their sin was atoned for by the blood of the sheep, bulls and goat, but it was never taken away. However, the Lord Jesus went to the cross and died for the sins of humanity. What he did, his death on the cross forever shattered the sin and death of man. It is clear here, if not then, this. Uh, that we can listen to this uh, precious promise of the scripture that in Revelation 1 5 says that from Jesus Christ, who is faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that love us, wash from our sin in his own blood and again in, in 1 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 18 to 19, he, he know that. Ye were not redeemed with corruptible thing as silver or gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from our Father, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as a lamb with a blemish, without spot. But the way, uh, but the word safe in this verse means to keep safe, sound, to rescue from all harm and danger, from destruction, from perishing. And sounds to me like when a person comes to Jesus by faith and gets that it's all done. That person doesn't need to fear losing his salvation because God is faithful to his word of promise. So he says also that, uh, he also says that, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Shall, uh, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And the, uh, and the other uh, portion is the power of the cross. So when a person plays, uh, when uh, or we place our faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ, and that person is forever changed, the change of sins are broken. Um, and sorry, to, sorry, to, uh, sorry to interrupt, Abhishek. Uh, time is up. So uh, you can conclude. You can share and um, share your conclusion. Uh, they are made into new creature. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 15 says that for newborn believer doesn't live his life in bondage to sin. And also says in, uh, because in 2 Corinthians 5, 15, we become a new creature in Christ Jesus. In Romans 6, it also says the blood has the power to change every life touched by it. There is a real, real wonder, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. So the blood of Jesus bought indiv every individual and, and brought us, if we believe on him, I will never experience the flames and the fire of hell. And last we say by concluding this, one of the most precious promise in the Bible uh, pertaining to this subject is found in John 5, 24 says that verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hear, it, hear my word and believe on him that sent me had everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation is passed from death unto life. Here the Bible tells us that we will never come into condemnation. Thank God the child will not the child of God will never uh, have to go to hell. Satan will not get his his wish. So we will rejoice today and always. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you, Abhishek. I'm sorry for putting you on the spot <laughs> for today to present it today, but uh, I think uh, a very very important message, you know, the message of the cross, um, which you like you rightly said, uh, many times we overlook uh, while you know the, the 
well, the grace of God, uh, the benefits of the cross, everything is is ours, you know, the inheritance and everything is ours. It's because of the cross. It's because of what the Lord did for us and, uh, and the reality of that. I think uh, for us as believers, you know, we, we've been hearing these terminologies, like right? the cross, shedding of blood, sacrifice, over and over again. And uh, and we can kind of get familiar with it and get a little comfortable with it, right? Uh, but when you, like you rightly said, when you look at, you know, the, the death uh, of the cross, the physical suffering, the painful uh, suffering, the terrible, uh, how terrible it was, and, uh, uh, and not not just the physical, but the emotional and the spiritual, right? So he, he carried our sickness, he carried our sin, sins and um, uh, uh, upon himself. So, um, so the the whole thing that he did with us in in, in mind. Right, so um, that's amazing. I think that we just need to uh, revisit over and over again uh, from time to time. So yeah, so that was a um, uh, that was good, good, good Abhishek. So good topic. Um, and um, yeah, maybe you know if you had time to present all the script scriptures in a PowerPoint, that would have been great as well. Um, I just felt that you know you could arrange the material. You know, you had good content, right? You had good. Uh, scripture references, everything. If you could just arrange it a bit logically, uh, like okay, uh, I, I don't know in whatever way you know, physical suffering, uh, suffering, and uh, the outcome, and the consequence, or you know, uh, what I need to do, uh, you know, in some way, if you just um, arrange it, it'll be uh, really easy for the uh, for the audience to receive that you know remember receive that and also remember that and uh, you know kind of apply that so i think that's the only uh, thing that i would say um you you know you have it was a good very good effort good content good scripture uh, scripture references and everything to, um, uh, but if you can just arrange it uh, and categorize it and uh, and you know the main points if you can just um, kind of place it there so it's easy um, to know where you are going with the message, right? Um, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so uh, I just see thank that, you, uh, yeah, you're most welcome. So Avni is ready to prepare, okay, I'm mean, sorry, share. Um, so yeah, yeah, Avni, you can, yes, thank you, you can go ahead, yeah. Suddenly it came, I had to put the things in, right? So okay, I, no I said, okay. yeah. So okay. uh, I'll just uh, start my PPT and then I'll start my presentation. Am I, uh, is the presentation? Uh, yes, yes, we can see. It's it's good. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. A very pleasant morning to every one of you. In the name of Jesus, uh, I greet everyone. Uh, my sermon for today is Fear of the Lord, the Source of All Wisdom. Uh, fear of the Lord, we all have read scriptures and we all have must have meditated on it. So to start with, I will uh, just share uh, with what the fear of the world is and then we'll go to fear of the Lord. We all are not alien to uh, fear, fear of the world. In some way or the other, we have all experienced fear in uh, many ways. Fear of failure, fear of losing a loved one, fear of death, rejection, misunderstood, being misunderstood, fear of condemnation, darkness or height, a crowd or uh, anything. So all these things uh, have we have grown up with until we come to a place where we um, encounter Lord and when we understand how secure we are in him. So th this is one kind of fear that we grow up with. But uh, there is also another kind of fear that I would like to share here is uh, people who go on adventures. 
so they know that how much risk is there in that adventure and how much uh, um, their life is at stake yet they love the adventure and they do these things knowing that it excites us but fear of death and accident and losing life still does not stop them from uh, taking up this adventure so um, we see that uh, there is fear involved yet they do not give up on doing things that they want to do so this is another kind of fear yet there is a joy which is uh, attached to it there is a excitement that is attached to it and that keeps them going and uh, you know uh, going upward like they they take a higher and higher standards of adventure and risks and they still continue with this so this is uh, two kinds of fear that we know about the world now we come to the next thing the fear of the god in the garden of eden and in the life of jesus here we i want to bring a comparison of the two in genesis we see that when adam sinned and he found that he was naked he hid himself the fear of the lord gripped him and that fear took him away from the lord and he tried to hide himself every day he knew god would come and meet him in the evening and as the time draw near he just hid himself he was afraid to come in god's presence because of his disobedience and this fear is different from the fear that jesus walked in in isaiah 11:3 we see that it is written that he will delight in the fear of the lord unlike adam jesus walked in the fear of the lord but this fear did not take him away from god but he delighted in the fear and that is what he came to teach us how we can delight in the fear of the lord and 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 we can um, uh, we can walk in victory we can walk in that fullness and we can walk in that victory which was lost in adam but today we know that uh, adam uh, what he lost jesus by walking in the fear of the lord he gave us all that back so we see that bible is full of verses that talk about the fear of the lord and outcome of it uh, i've heard a few times that uh, around 365 times bible has the phrase fear not as we read and meditate the scriptures we realize that this fear is very different from the fear we talked about in the beginning of sermon fear of the lord is described as a sense of awe reverence honor and respect for god and this is the fear that we need to walk in as believers we are called to walk and this fear comes when we come in christ so in christ we delight in the fear of the lord we we have experienced the joy and love that god uh, has poured on us and that gives us uh, so much uh, strength to uh, obey god so much strength to uh, believe in his promises so much strength to do Uh, what he wants us to do so uh, on the cross he gave us that victory he gave us that um, uh, way of life of walking in his fear so that following him we can be free from all the other fears i always uh, used to uh, when i used to live in a place where it was a very um, you know renowned for all the criminal things in ghaziabad in up people would say how do you survive there and how do you live there i said i never had any fear because i fear the lord and i know that my lord has the strength to deliver me from any evil so i would not be fearful of any man because a fear of the lord and his uh, uh, security and trust would keep me going and i would uh, not fear anything else because i i know that fearing the lord is something that will keep me safe so uh, we do so many things in life but we have to remember uh, the the example that jesus gave and along with him we have the examples of many other um, uh, people um, i think i'm not able to change my slide there is some um maybe you can just click on the it's actually come back to uh, a different view maybe mm-hmm. you can just do a um, slide show again or shift f5 okay um yes now no, the slide has changed yeah it has changed so uh, um, when we read the scriptures we see jesus gave us the confidence by his obedience in hebrews 10 he says that 
he is he opened a new life giving way through the curtain into the most holy place and because of the blood of jesus we have the confidence all fears are gone even when we fall even when we uh, uh, sometimes you know disappoint god even when we are weak and when we are weary when we uh, move away it is jesus who keeps us going it is jesus's work on the cross that strengthens us and keeps us going and uh, as romans 15:9 says by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by one man's obedience many will be made righteous what a beautiful promise that god has given us what adam did may take us away from god but what jesus did brings us not only into the righteousness of god but in, into obedience in love and in walking in that confidence that jesus has completed the work for us and that we can rejoice and be glad in it and and delight in the fear of the lord you know this one thing when i read in isaiah 113 that he delighted in, in the fear of the lord that actually touched my heart because uh, even though we are believers even though we are uh, walking uh, with that confidence uh, in the lord sometimes we fear the world and last two years have been difficult for us when we have walked in uh, we have heard news and and, and incidents where uh, fear has gripped us but uh, as we know that as we renew our mind through the word of god and be aligned to the word of god uh, there is uh, no fear that will ever come uh, and grip us because the lord has the final word over our life it is the lord who decides what and when we walk in the fear no matter how difficult the circumstances may be how difficult uh, everything seems we know and we have the confidence that god will bring us out of that situation in every uh, way so uh, we also can take the example of paul and silas when they were in the in the prison uh, though i had written it in the notes even yes uh, in, on this sunday uh, a pastor shared the same uh, example so i'm so joyful to share this again with you that even though they were in the prison totally bound but uh, instead of uh, walking in fear of the world and the prison authorities and the system and romans they chose to walk in the fear of the lord and they just rejoiced and they they worshiped the lord and that br brought them to a place of complete deliverance and the chains were open the prison doors were open so this is how they chose to praise god to overcome all their other thoughts and here we see that um, they were they were they weren't fearful of tribulation they weren't fearful of being killed or being persecuted they were fearing the lord and that fear kept them move uh, forward in their journey in their purpose in their plans so this fear was uh, something that always uh, i meditate on and i always think lord let this fear grip me so much more that every other fear is faded away as i walk with you father so there is a fear which is outside christ and then there is a fear which is in christ so fear of the world is outside christ but in christ the fear of the lord keeps us going and no other pre fear prevails only fear of the lord removes all other fears so, uh, so this is how um, uh, we can understand the difference between uh, the fear of the world and the fear of the lord fear of the lord can hinder us from walking in the fear of the world so we have to be very cautious that we do not uh, Mm, we walk in any other fear because other fears can cripple us other fears can move us away from purposes of god other fears can a fear of even being accepted by people fear of being rejected by people and all those fears can keep us away from the uh, from from our plan and purpose uh, in the lord but when we fear lord he gives us the wisdom to deal with every situation in a more beautiful way and um, that fear helps us walk in obedience fulfill the purpose and plans god for, has for us uh, as the word says a wise man who builds the house on the rock was the one not who not only heard the word but also obeyed it and this obedience is fruit of walking in the fear of the lord so there are some more scriptures which remind us of what uh, the different kinds of fears uh, the word tells us and 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 he it uh, in matthew 10 28 uh, it is written do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in 
hell. So there are so many scriptures. I mean, you can just read through with this uh, one word, fear of the Lord, and you will come across many, many, many scriptures that teach us about uh, the, the kind of fear Lord expects us to walk in. And that fear will surely draw us intimate to the Lord, draw us to grow in the anointing of the Lord, help us to grow in the truth of God's word, be able to touch lives like never before, be able to uh, bring that work of the kingdom on this earth that Lord expects us to do. So I would encourage each of you to um, meditate on these scriptures uh, and uh, always, always, um, work with the confidence that when we fear the Lord, we need not fear anyone else. And uh, to finish with, I would just uh, want to share uh, one uh, one quote, which, you know, I don't know, it came to my heart that when we walk in the fear of the Lord, so, uh, sorry, just uh, uh, wisdom to walk in the fear of the Lord comes by walking in the fear of the Lord. So uh, wisdom comes by uh, walking in the fear of the Lord. Uh, how to walk in the fear of the Lord. So I was just rolling through this thought. And to finish with, I would leave you with this thought. And may God bless each of you. And, and thank you, Pastor, for giving me this opportunity. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Avni. I think that was good. Uh, the fear of the Lord. Um, yeah, I think we have one more minute. So what I'll do is uh, probably um, share the feedback uh, probably in the next class, Friday. But it was good, well presented. Uh, thank you. Uh, some very good insights, you know, like um, uh, the fear that, uh, fear actually, uh, which takes you away from the Lord is uh, is not the fear of the Lord. It's actually fear of the world. And also the fear of the world separates us from God, prevents uh, or distances us from the plans and purposes of God. So really some very good indicators to find out, you know, whether it's uh, worldly fear or fear of the Lord. And Isaiah eleven three again a wonderful reminder of the fact that um, the Lord Jesus Himself He delighted in the fear of the Lord, and so we have that exam as an example. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much, and uh, a big thank you to everyone who shared Abhishek, Prabhaka, and Abhi. Uh, wonderful, very uh, inspiring, very um, uh, very blessed to hear. Uh, hear from you guys. Thank you so much. So um, next uh, class on Friday. So we already have a scheduled, um, you know, we've, I've already scheduled three uh, persons in case you're not able to present for whatever reason, you know, uh, please check with others and uh, in your place so that you can confirm that, right? So we can have three people present. Um, so you, you please check within the group and see who wants to present in case you're not able to present and and you can confirm, like you can send me an email and say, okay, I'm, I'm not able to present, but this person is presenting in my place. Okay, so that would be better um, rather than, you know, kind of uh, asking people in the class, right? So you could do that. Okay, thank you so much. God bless. Have a great day. We'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.